Today's video is all about Web 3.0. So we're gonna answer quite a few questions. What is Web 3 and who's behind it? What are some of the key benefits of Web 3? What are some of the problems that could come up? What are some of the Web 3 technologies you may wanna experiment with? And before we go, I'm even going to tell you what I'm doing to prepare for Web 3. Now, if you guys don't know, my name is Chrissy Pips. Welcome to my channel. And as always, if you guys are here, you're interested. So let's get into it. So what is Web 3? Well, before we answer that, we kind of need to quickly cover what Web 1 and Web 2 are. So you're familiar with basic HTML and emails, just being able to communicate information back and forth. Okay, that's Web 1.0. Web 2.0 is where the development and sharing of information became available as well as a more interactive experience with things like social media. Now, Web 3 is a little bit different. So what is Web 3? Web 3, also known as semantic web or the web of data, is a term used to describe the next generation of the World Wide Web. It refers to a version of the web where information is represented in a way that allows it to be more easily understood and processed by machines, enabling more intelligent and useful applications and services. Web3 technologies include things like semantic markup languages, linked data, and knowledge graphs, which are used to represent and interlink data in a more structured and meaningful way. This makes it possible for machines to better understand the relationship between different pieces of information and to use that understanding to provide more useful and relevant services to the users like you and I. So the semantic web or web three is an extension of the World Wide Web through the standards set by the World Wide Web Consortium. And I know you're like, Chrissy, who is the World Wide Web Consortium? Well, the W3C is an international community that develops standards for the World Wide Web. And I'm trying to say it slow because it's a tongue twister. <laughs> but the W3C was founded in 1994 by a guy named Tim Brenners Lee. Well, this guy, the inventor of the World Wide Web. He's been using two monitors since monitors had fat backs. This man was ahead of his time. But the headquarters for the company and the, the group is actually in Massachusetts here in the United States. The W3C's mission is to lead the web to its full potential by developing protocols and guidelines that ensure the long-term growth of the web. So yeah, to achieve this, the W3C brings together experts from academia, industry, and government to discuss and develop standards for the web. The W3C is an important organization in the field of web development and its standards and widely used by web developers around the world. The W3C's work has helped to shape and mold the modern web and continues to play a critical role in its development. So thanks, Tim. So what are some of the key benefits of Web 3.0? Well, there are a bunch, but some of the benefits, like the top benefits that I found include improved search and discovery. So with Web3, it becomes easier for machines to understand and interpret the information on the web, which means that search engines and other applications can provide more relevant and useful results to the users. This can make it easier for people to find the information that they need to discover new and interesting things on the web. Better interoperability. Web3 enables different pieces of information to be linked and related to each other in a more structured and meaningful way. This makes it easier for different systems and applications to work together and share and exchange information. Increased automation. 
Because the semantic web or web three allows machines to better understand and process the information on the web, it opens up the possibility of automating many tasks and processes that currently require human intervention. This can lead to increased efficiency and productivity. Then we have enhanced personalization. With the semantic web or web three, it becomes possible for machines to understand the context and meaning of the information on the web. This can enable more personalized and relevant experiences for users. So for example, a personal assistant could use semantic data to understand a user's preferences and interests and provide recommendations or other personalized services based on that understanding. While Web3 or the semantic web has the potential to bring many benefits, there are also some potential drawbacks and challenges that need to be considered. Some of the key issues and challenges associated with Web3 are privacy and security. Web3 involves the creation and sharing of large amounts of structured data, which can raise concerns about privacy and security. For example, the linking and interlinking of data across different sources can make it easier for third parties to track and monitor individual users. And the potential for misuse of personal data is a significant concern as a result. Next, we have inequality and bias. Web3 relies on the creation and use of structured data, which can be subject to human bias and errors. If the structured data is used to make decisions or provide services, it is possible that these biases and errors could be perpetuated and amplified, leading to unequal or unfair outcomes for certain groups of people. Let that sink in. Then we have complexity and fragmentation. The semantic web is a complex and evolving field with many different technologies and standards being developed and used. This can make it difficult for people to understand and navigate the space, and it can lead to fragmentation and inter interoperability issues. Tongue tied, y'all. Now, the last potential drawback that I'm gonna speak about is dependence on technology. Web3 relies on advanced technologies like semantic markup languages and knowledge graphs, which require significant resources and expertise to create and maintain. This means that the benefits of the semantic web or web3 may not be equally accessible to everyone, and it may perpetuate current and existing inequalities and power imbalances. Now, if you are enjoying this video so far and you wanna see more like it, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Your support helps me to continue to create content that I hope you will find interesting and valuable. So thank you so much for your support. Now let's answer the question, what are some of the Web3 technologies you may wanna experiment with or just familiarize yourself with? Now, remember, Web3 technologies refer to the next generation of the internet, which is centered around the idea of the semantic web that can be understood by machines. So some of the key technologies that are being developed as part of the Web3 movement include things like natural language processing or NLP technologies, which allow for the creation of applications that can understand and generate human language. Then we have artificial intelligence or AI technologies, such as machine learning and deep learning, which allows for the creation of like intelligent systems that can learn and adapt to new data. Sounds crazy if you think about what you see in the movies, but it's actually quite helpful. Then we have blockchain technologies, which enable decentralized and secure networks for storing and transferring data. Most people are familiar with it, whether they're using it or not, because they've seen something about it on the news or heard something about it in a conversation. Overall, there are a bunch of exciting technologies that are being developed as a part of the Web3 movement, and it is an exciting time to be experimenting with these technologies. 
If you guys are new to the channel, you may not know this, but I am a huge proponent of pressing the buttons. Push the buttons till you break the dang thing. Speak with tech support and fix it. That's really the easiest way for me personally to learn how to use and do new things. So my job is to try to break it and then explain to you what not to do. Now, lastly, let's jump into the top four things that I am doing to prepare for the use of Web3 or the semantic web. Now, this is just what I'm doing. And if you want to do it too, I'm sharing. Okay. So I'm trying my best to stay up to date on the latest developments in Web3. The semantic web is a rapidly evolving field with new technologies and standards being developed all the time. So to prepare, it's important to stay informed about the latest developments and to understand how these developments may impact my work or interests in the future. So by learning about just key technologies and standards, I'm ensuring that I can effectively use Web3 technologies when everything comes to pass, right? Which means that I need to understand the key technologies and standards that are used in the field. So this includes a few things like semantic markup languages, linked data, and knowledge graphs that I mentioned earlier in the video. Next, I'm taking into consideration the potential risks and challenges that come with Web3. So while the semantic web has the potential to bring a lot of benefits to the space, it is also important to consider the potential risks and challenges that may come up too. So this may include things like privacy and security concerns, bias and inequality, and the dependence on technology, which we covered earlier in this video. Now, I'm also trying my best to find and engage with the community. The Semantic Web is a growing and vibrant community with many people and organizations working on the development and use of Web3 technologies. So to prepare for the use of Web3, I feel it can be helpful to engage with this community and learn from others who are working in this actual field. Now, lastly, I am experimenting and exploring. The best way to me to prepare for Web3 is to experiment with the technologies and to explore the potential applications and uses, or at least explore the ways that I might potentially be using Web3. So I like having a little bit of hands-on experience and I feel like the hands-on experience gives me the ability to better understand the possibilities and limitations of Web3 that we might run into or I might run into. So what are your thoughts about Web3? Do you have any pros or cons that stand out to you? Do you have any questions that you'd like me to try to find the answers to for you? Um, make sure to comment below and let me know. Now, like I said earlier, it definitely helps out the channel if you go ahead and like and even consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. I really do appreciate it. It lets me know that you guys are enjoying the content that I'm putting out so that I can put out more. It also lets me know which videos our community should probably stay away from. So thanks in advance. But as always, I hope you guys are having an absolutely amazing morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world, and I'll see you in the next video. Bass drop.